Uh, viewers at home, welcome to this Q&A interview with Avid Leongoren, uh, director of Hayopka, the Nympho Dimano story. Okay. Nympha, <laughs> oops, that was a Freudian slip. Uh, the Nympha, uh, Nympha Dimano story, uh, uh, the, uh, the first Filipino animated feature to, uh, to be picked up by Netflix. Um, Avid, there's actually, we should probably share with the people at home a little bit of a, a background on this, that we were actually talking about having uh, uh, Nympha show up at uh, Fantasia last year. Last year. And yeah. then, you know, I think our initial conversation was all like, yeah, we're going to have you come to Montreal. We're going to enjoy <laughs> sin together. It was all looked so good. Eat poutine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then COVID happened, um, which... Um, which meant that everything was uh, knocked down to uh, strictly virtual uh, online screenings. Um, and at the same time, well, you can probably fill in from this point, uh, the, uh, the streaming connection for, uh, for high upcom. Yeah. So, um, well, that, that was a big bummer because the original, um, this is meant to be a theatrical film anyway. So um, when you invited us, that was, that was perfect. It's like, oh, we'll start, with, with Fantasia, then we'll do festivals, and we come to my country around November or December. And, you know, that was everything. That was how everything was planned. And then, um, so the, the whole Netflix deal really was just a pandemic decision. It wasn't ideal at all. And, you know, last, and last year, every, um, around March, it felt like the world was ending, so it was let's let's um, let's take what we could, you know. Let's cut our losses and take whatever deal we can make out of this because. So it wasn't the greatest of deals because, and and I don't blame Netflix for that. That was the position they were in. They they had a great year because a lot of players didn't have any options. So and they knew that they were the only game. So. Um, so even if, uh, so even if technically we could still have done festivals last year, every festival that we would say yes to meant that they would chopping, they were gonna reduce the pay. So it was a it was a very hard decision. So like okay, so we won't do festivals this year, and, and, you know, because we were we were making that decision when the world was burning. So you didn't yeah. know. What so so the the thought back then was okay. Let's just take what we can, cut our losses, and and let's let's limit let's let's give some parts. Um, we we agreed to Asia. Um, at originally the Netflix deal wanted a, a worldwide release, mm -hmm. and we were able to negotiate it to down to Asia so we could do festivals at least this year. So yeah, so it, um. Those are like well, it looks like that was parts. that was a very wise decision because you've already done you did NSC, yeah. uh, you're doing Fantasia, the greatest festival in the world, <laughs> in the wonderful um, world wide universe. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I saw just just today on Facebook you posted that uh, you had to uh, ended up having to pass on Sitges yeah, because you had already <laughs> done a, a festival in that country. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's still that saying was, something. That, that, it's, that was like um that was a bummer because that would have been the first festival that we could physically go to, because oh because um, we're all vaxxed up and that's like further into the year and you know borders are relaxing so mm -hmm. that was like the other bum bummy part you know like um and 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 Fantasia as well I I don't know um I don't know if he's um. I'm a bit bummed about Fantasia as well because I submitted my first film to Fantasia five years ago. It was uh, Saving Sally. Saving Sally, and we did we we did that through. I know it's very hard to get through when you're submitting through um, without a box because you're like at, towards at the end of. Uh, I understand now that festivals make their lineup very early and probably dip into the without a box thing much later on. So. You're, mm -hmm. you're, there'll be like a thousand of you vying for like maybe the 10 slots left or something like that. So the yeah. odds were, weren't um, in our favor back then. So, mm -hmm. so it was like, so that's why I was so happy when, when, when you, when you invited us and, 
every it's like okay we're doing it right this time we're gonna do festivals first because we when we released my first film it was like a baptismal of fire we at we were at first we thought all you had to do was make a film and everything else is easy apparently that's not <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was i had to learn the hard way that making a film is only 50% it's like distribution is a whole new thing so we 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 did the release first and i grew white hair because of the stress then we did festivals after so mm. at 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 so that had its own cluster fuck of problems attached to that but then i thought we were doing it right this time to do festivals first earn our you know um gain exposure then you do your theatrical back home and we we'd be in a better position to to negotiate with with the distributors and stuff like that mm-hmm. so, but of course everything was you know the fire nation attack and everything was upside down last year and even the decision to go straight to netflix i will never know if that's a good thing it seemed like a good thing last year but it's like half and half to, you know but i'm working on my third film so maybe we'll get it better this time so i guess that's just it you know yeah yeah it's uh sooner or later so so there has been no uh theatrical for uh, for high up ka yeah it has it's like the first time it actually screened in the theater was in ansi so that's like uh and we're not there so the first, yeah yeah i haven't i paid i purchased a dcp i mean we have a dcp for it and i haven't even seen it on a theater so, yeah know. yeah that's really frustrating it's uh it's part of my uh, part of my frustration this year. I mean, in many ways, things are going great for the for the festival. Uh, we've got a great lineup, uh, so on and so forth. But um, you know, I've been very frustrated that uh, you know so many uh, filmmakers are like itching desperately to to come to to come to Montreal for the festival. But it's like, look, the the Canadian government will shoot your plane down <laughs> if you try to show up. You know, it's uh, we're doing really well here. And I think it's because we've had pretty rigorous rules about, uh, you know, like better safe than sorry. But uh, are, are you guys um, maskless? Are you a maskless society now? No, we're still doing. Uh, uh, we're uh, all stores. It's uh, indoor mm-hmm. places. It's still like you know, a mask um people are uh you know we're, we're uh, vaccination rates are very very good but you know it's uh it's a very canadian like we're right next to the americans and anything that the americans do we go like oh well let's not do that they're crazy people <laughs> you know so um so i mean the, you know the, the numbers are down and it looks like by um you know sub, the beginning of september things will uh, loosen up a little bit but we'll see you know it's a uh, thing uh, you know, we've seen both good news and bad news over the process. Even the Fantasia schedule is a bit later now, right? I mean, yeah, I we know. we deliberately put it back uh, by about a month uh, or three weeks, um, hoping and rightfully hoping that we would be able to, there would be a bit of loosening up and we can get some people into theaters. So we have a giant, like, thousand seat cinema, the most beautiful cinema in Montreal, and we're allowed to put 250 <laughs> people in there with their little masks all sitting apart from each other. So it's not going to look, it's going to look like a medical conference, but um, still it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a step back to, you know, going back towards the normal that we're really looking forward to uh, next year. Um, Let's, uh, let's, let's wait to talk about your, your next film. We'll save that for later in the, uh, in the interview, because that's a nice way to, to, to finish things up. Like, let's talk about your next film, but um, the uh, let's uh, let's in the meantime, I, something I'd like to chat with you a bit is a sort of the larger picture of uh, Filipino animation, uh, Filipino independent animation. Uh, you know, this is an interesting year for Filipino animation uh, with the uh, the trace. Uh, how is it pronounced? Tracy, 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 yeah, Tracy uh, on uh, on Netflix. Now, that's a little bit of a frustration because. I was really excited, you know. I'm I've got a real fondness of uh, for Filipino mythology and, and folklore because you have the best monsters. Japan <laughs> has pretty good monsters. Uh, Europe has a couple of good ones. The Philippines have the best monsters <laughs> in the world. Uh, so I was really excited about that. But you know, you could say yes, the story is adapted from uh, a Philippine comic book. Uh, it's uh, it's a Filipino story, definitely. But the animation wasn't done in the Philippines. Yeah, uh, it's Korean. Like, um, 
but the the heads of the of the departments were Filipino Americans. So that, that mm. there's that. It's actually um I I, I was talking about it. Um, I was actually um that's one of like the bigger topics about about production. Like you know um so much of the world's animation is done in the Philippines. Like. You know, um, because we have a huge outsource industry, you know, um, and uh, for for some reason, uh, it didn't make sense for Trese to be animated in the Philippines because uh, no studio could partner, no studio could invest because we're cause all the studios here are all the service studios are. Um, that's just it; they're service, but they don't mm-hmm. really know the model of of investing into a project you know uh not so they they got a better deal with a korea with korean providers and also so there's that i had to explain that to to a lot of the animators like you know i did the because it's it's a it's a level of frustration from the from the local creators i had to explain that it's not just it, it's not just because you know it's cheaper to do things here but that doesn't really attract a producer a producer needs tax breaks and and the tax breaks just you know that's why a lot of work is done in in Canada because of the tax breaks right mm-hmm. and, so we just very recently had these tax breaks to attract more productions here so that mm-hmm. just hap- that just rolled out last year so it's very new because you know because it's not enough to to it's not enough that you're your labor is cheap you still need to make you know you need you need to make it more attractive or more people could go into a film or and be able to like okay we'll invest part of our labor you know we don't mm-hmm. just need cash so it, it's a lot of those like like technical technical business things that that yeah. led to it not being animated in the philippines mm. so, which is frustrating because as a result uh you know, it looks, it looks Japanese, it looks Korean, it does not, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, but that's at the same time, one has to ask the question, like, what is the Filipino look? It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't even the style, it doesn't, doesn't even exist yet. We're, and, we're, uh, we're trying you know, I think you're actually out. a key player in <laughs> building that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's something we're, we're trying to figure out as well. But, you know, Trese is still a win for us in that it's still based on an IP. So we we're doing baby steps. So maybe the, the, if the, their next season can be done here, or um, it gives um, it means more people are interested in our IP. Like my friend's comic book, because um, Tressa is being is now being distributed in the U.S. The same publisher mm. just asked is will pub is now talking to my friend who, to to publish his comic. So there's that, you know. So. So and it's also a myth and monsters type of to, type of comic book. So, mm-hmm. so that's great. So that's that's you know all all uh, the rising tide raises all ships. So it, it brought more eyes to hey, there's stuff in the Philippines. So mm-hmm. um, it, let's let it you know we're pretty well known in, in the art house cinema world, but not very well known for our animation and genre stuff. So we have right. a rich a lot of great comic book. Um, artists and, and IPs here that are just waiting to be mm. discovered. So that's 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 a cool thing about about Tresen. <laughs> cool. That's very that's uh, that's exciting news. Um, you know, so the sort of the reverse of that is how uh, how has Hayop Ka been received by the Filipino audience? Are you uh, how conscious of you of that? Uh, it's it's a it's a mix like. Um, I, I actually, it's very weird because you know it, we kind of released it in a vacuum because it went straight to so all you have would be reviews and feedback and well we got lots of fan art and we have you know we have a bunch of great reviews and people who hate us because <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> there's like it's very polar um, it's either people really love it because they get what we were going for or they hate us for. Um, how do I say this? It's the beauty queen. Um, it's the beauty queen phenomenon. Like um, since it was marketed as the first Filipino 
um, animated film uh, animated film on Netflix, there is this contingent of people who think that we should represent our country better. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, you guys probably don't have that, but that's a, a that's a, a pervasive uh, that's a prevalent kind of thinking from small countries that doesn't have much representation in the international scene. So. Mm -hmm. um, so the people who hate our film are the ones who, um, you know, uh, they're like saying, so why are we doing more of this shit genre? Because, you know, we're, we're playing with the telenovela genre. Yeah. And, and, and intellectuals, intellectuals, uh, you know, um, kind of hate that that's what, that's what our entertainment, mass entertainment is, you know, so... It's but like, that's such a therefore high up guy is such an accurate reflection of that's what I exactly. loved about it right away. It's like <laughs> this is, uh, you know, this is such a uh, such a distinctly Filipino thing. Although I will tell you, to be honest, I think that that's, um, you know, I can't wait to see high up get into the uh, Latin American and yeah. South American market. But, because but funny you said that because um, the first the very first time I pitched, uh, I showed this the project to the public was in a festival, in, in the incubator of a festival in, in Spain. And, mm -hmm. and I was so surprised because, uh, but of course, naturally they would, under, they would get it because that's the telenovela. Everybody, it was, an, uh, it was like an, the audience were Ibero, Latin American, and they totally got what we were going for. So, and when I workshopped it in Tenerife, another part of Spain with other animation projects, everybody got it as well. So yeah, we're, 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 Looking forward to to getting into our next, you know, to, into the into the Latin American sphere because they, they would totally get the, mm -hmm. the uh, that telenovela thing. So yeah, so you know when it so that was that was a that was the feedback we got. Either people totally got it and loved that we were playing, or people hate us for representing our country that way. So, which I mm. kind of get because you know it's a beauty queen thing, you know. Like if you're if you're going out there, you know, beauty pageants are a big deal for us. You know, that's mm. every, you, know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you should represent like the best things about your country, not like you know, not not this this genre, which is like the um. You should be more aspirational. I guess that's the more. Um, that's the more for for something that is the first. So that's where most of the hate came from. That it's 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 a uh, that's not what it that's that shouldn't be the first. But the thing is that I was telling everybody, but no one is making stuff. <laughs> so we're the, that's we're true. Like, so we're like, well, we're we're who you got. Sorry. So. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's also something to be said for. I mean, it's very nice to put out the most you know, respectful, uh, respectable, uh, tasteful, uh, mature sort of representation. But you kind of want people to go see this stuff, too. <laughs> and the fact is, the vast majority of society everywhere in the world is not respectable, does not have good taste, and is not particularly mature. And I speak yeah, of myself yeah. as much as anyone. Um, so uh, regardless, I think it's uh, I, I think it's very exciting uh, news and very a very exciting development that uh, Hayab Ka, and that Hayab Ka is now getting the attention uh, outside of Asia and outside of uh, the Philippines. Uh, it's, uh, you you know, I'm seeing you're doing festival after festival, and it's uh, it's finally getting the notice. You know, it took a while, but yeah. uh, I think this is great for the film and great for you as well. Um, and sort of uh, spreading the word of the, the of the great work that you're doing. Now um, we can uh, now move on to what we were talking about before the uh, the uh, your your next project. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, here's the thing, and I want to know if you were just teasing um, and uh, setting me up to look like a fool, but I saw it briefly on, uh, I think you were posting these on Facebook, uh, the possibility of a Jerry film. Yeah, that's, that's what we're, we're working on that, um, the, the Jerry action bonanza. So yes. it's going to be based on like classic Filipino action films where it's all, you know, people hold it on their backs and they're they're gonna spit like 20 pages of dialogue before they shoot at each other so yeah 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 there, there is that um it's uh, i guess the closest thing would be like bollywood action films where it's so yeah it's so over the top and 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 you know 
that's what if that's what that's the that's the genre we're going for next with with Jerry being an action star and fighting um, oligarchs. <laughs> that's fantastic because Jerry is I really love Jerry. Jerry is such I mean, you know, it's Jerry is not the main character or even like sort of uh, the one of the the, the 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 love triangle, the primary characters. But, you know, the purpose that he serves in High Up Ka and how he sort of brings everything together at the end is just wonderful. So the idea of seeing more of Jerry is yeah. very exciting. But that's not the film that that's not your next project. Am I correct? Yeah, we're um, so Jerry, the uh, Jerry action bonanza is being written right now. Mm -hmm. um, the film that we went straight into right after um, right after we we released High Up Ka. Because one of the things I learned from the first film is that when we, um, I would when I got paid for the first film, I was suddenly taxed for that so much. So I needed to, <laughs> so that's why. Right. You, so now I understood why people are making and making stuff. You can't be, <laughs> you know. It's like, it's like okay, so I spent twelve years making this film, but you're taxing me for this year. So that was that was one of those harsh lessons again. Because mm -hmm. I I got the money from the theatrical sales and all the platform sales and then suddenly I was getting um, tax 33% for that year and I haven't spent anything so that was so after that we I learned that okay I should have the next film ready while I'm when as soon as he released this film so I'm working on this film called Jaja Zaturna versus the Amazonistas of Planet X it's um, the story of a shy gay guy who discovers a a, a magical comet that he swallows and it turns him into a flamboyant female superhero mm -hmm. re ready to battle aliens and zombies and giant frogs that threaten his hometown. Mm. So, and this is based on a, on a comic book as well? It's a, on a graphic novel by Carlo Vergara. It, it, it was, the graphic novel was released in 2001. It became mm -hmm. a musical in 2004 and was a live action film in 2005. So mm -hmm. we're doing an animated ver uh, an animated film that's that's um, a faithful adaptation of the graphic novel because the first live action film was based off the musical. So it's like uh, <laughs> so comic book musical musical film. We're doing an animated film that's um, based on the graphic novel. It's a super fun graphic. Right, novel. right. Well, I hope there'll be a strong musical element. Uh, right on. I hope there'll be a strong musical element to it um, because uh, this is something, uh, this is just a personal sort of pet peeve. You know, I watch, I don't know how many animated films every year to, uh, to, make, my, uh, to make my choices uh, for Fantasia. And I'm always so excited and so rewarded uh, to use, and I've been thinking about this, why does um, music, uh, why does it work so, so well with animation? It's because with animation, you can control movement in a way that you can't with live action. And uh, so, I mean, I, I'm not saying make a musical where all the, <laughs> the dialogue is delivered in song like that. Uh, yeah. But, you know, to have a strong musical dimension to it, like really well-developed music is um, is something I would strongly encourage because that's something I think is kind of missing a little bit from uh, from animation worldwide. So. That's my little piece of advice for your for your, for your next project. What's the what's the time frame for uh, Jaja? Well, oh, we're we just finished the first watchable animatic, so we're still on track to deliver it by twenty twenty three. So maybe by then the world is still will be better, and maybe mm -hmm. we could have our pizza and, and, and I could come over and, and claim my pizza in, in, That's in right. Montreal. <laughs> you got it. You got it. well. I'm sincerely <laughs> looking forward to that. Um, and, uh, you know, anything that you uh, you and your, your team develop uh, has a home here. We're uh, very, very excited, very excited to include Hayapka in, uh, in our, uh, which is, by the way, the only feature that's not from France, Japan, or uh, the U.S. this year. Those are the big three. And so I'm really glad to be able to get, uh, get represent the Philippines in there, too. Yeah, when, when, we, when we were screened in AMC, People were surprised. There, there's a, there's a Philippines. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we have animation too. <laughs> yeah, and it's really good quality, and it's really well done, and I'm very, very proud to share it with my audience. 
Abbott, cool. thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today or this evening. <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be in touch and sooner or later we'll be able to talk face to face. Cool. <laughs> All right, That's man. It. Bye bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Bye <laughs> bye. Ciao.